Heavenly Father, how good it is to sing this song. And yes, we who have tasted and seen that you are good would profess that you are better than everything. That following your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, is worth leaving all behind. For to gain the whole world and forfeit the soul, it's the worst bargain. But to give up everything and to have Christ is to have everything. Lord, I pray this morning that you would be honored, that you would be glorified, that your strength would be on display, your power would be on display, your glory and your love would be on display. God, we pray that you would be pleased to raise up generations of faithful shepherds, faithful pastors, elders, who will care for local churches. And we pray, God, that you would multiply faithful churches to the ends of the earth. We pray for the church to be birthed in Maui Roro, in Papua New Guinea. And we pray for churches to be healthy here in Phoenix, to grow, to multiply, and to send faithful servants, disciples to the nations. We ask all this for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Where do pastors come from? Is there a pastor tree somewhere? Is there some school that produces pastors? And you might be thinking, yeah, I know lots of schools that produce pastors. I want to suggest to you this morning that a, a school can do no such thing. An MDiv degree, a Master's of Divinity degree, or a doctoral degree in theology or philosophy or religious studies can do no such thing. Paul made it clear in Acts 20 that it was the Holy Spirit who made a man an elder, a pastor in a local church. And what a seminary can do, what a training institution can do, what a, a discipleship program can do is give a man tools to understand the Word of God well so that he may be able to teach the Word of God well. The local church ought to be at the center of training pastors. I want to turn your attention this morning to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter, the last of the pastoral epistles and his last letter to Timothy. It's something of his swan song. In many ways, 2 Timothy is the penned words of a dying man. Paul is imprisoned and believes he will not get out. He is eagerly anticipating his home going, as he indicates in chapter 4. But in 2 Timothy 2.2, Paul tells Timothy this charge. The things which you have heard from me in the presence of many witnesses, entrust these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Now, several months ago, we looked at this verse in detail. We won't do so this morning, but I would highlight for you that faithful men are to be entrusted with apostolic doctrine. Faithful men are to be entrusted with apostolic doctrine, that is, the truths that are found in the New Testament, that first generation of truth that Jesus gave to his apostles to be the foundation of the church. And the church is not to add to those things, nor take away from those things, nor innovate new ideas, but stick to those truths. And four generations are in view in 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul and Timothy and those whom Timothy would entrust to be able to teach others also. And the implication is those generations extend down to our very day. That the task of training up men who will accurately handle God's word, who will faithfully shepherd God's flock, is the task of pastors who better to train pastors than pastors, and what better context to train pastors than the local church itself? This is a call that the elders of Grace Bible Church have taken very seriously and have done so now 
for a decade or more. This is pastors passing the baton to the next generation of pastors. I want to read to you uh, an extended section from this same letter, 2 Timothy chapter 3, turn the page just to the right, beginning in verse 10, and I want to read to you down through chapter 4 and verse 5. Paul tells Timothy, Now you followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, perseverance, persecutions, and sufferings, such as happened to me at Antioch and Iconium and at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, and out of them all the Lord rescued me. Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. You, however, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them, and that from childhood you have known the sacred writings which are able to give you wisdom that leads to salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but wanting to have their ears tickled, they will accumulate for themselves teachers in accordance with their own desires." and will turn away their ears from the truth, and will turn aside to myths. But you, be sober in all things, endure hardship, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. And the charge that Paul gave to Timothy, the elders of Grace Bible Church give similarly to Omri Miles and to Jeff Maxwell. Two men who have completed four years of Masters of Divinity work here at Grace Bible Church in an institution deemed Grace Bible Institute. And Grace Bible Institute was formed to continue the discipleship of men at the level of equipping those men who are qualified character-wise to pursue pastoral ministry with the tools that they need to effectively shepherd in the church one day. This is pastors passing the baton to the next generation of pastors. And the pastors at Grace Bible Church have been committed to this heart and soul. And you, Grace Bible Church, as a body, have been committed to this heart and soul. You have poured into the lives of these two men and their families. You have been a tremendous benefit and an encouragement to them. And I know they have been to you as well. You've known that both Jeff and Omri have served in small groups and various aspects of leadership in small groups and recently as small group leaders, you have heard them preach. Many of you have benefited from their counsel and their discipleship and their teaching and their friendship. You've experienced their faithful service as deacons, deacons as small group leaders, uh, deacons over the book table ministry, over the coffee fellowship, and they have been participating in Grace Bible Institute. For four years, they have taken nearly 100 credit hours of graduate-level work. Uh, one credit hour is uh, the equivalent to being in a classroom one hour every week over the course of a 15-week semester. Uh, so you're talking about 15 uh, hours uh, over the course of a semester for a one-credit class. Multiply that by 100, you get the idea of the classroom time they have spent, uh, which does not nearly approximate the... Uh, multiplied homework time, study time outside of the classroom. In fact, for the last four years, studying the Word of God deeply has been their occupation. It has been their hobby, their pursuit. Their graduate level work has been in the areas of hermeneutics and theology and Greek and Hebrew and church history, pastoral ministry, counseling, apologetics, and preaching. 
And the spinal cord of all of that instruction has been an approach to the Word of God, really starting at the level of studying hermeneutics in English and progressing to studying exegesis in the original languages. What do we know about the Bible? It is God's Word. And what are the implications of the fact that the Bible is God's Word? It is clear. That is, it's able to be understood through diligent study. It's understandable because God wrote it to be understood, to be heeded, to be obeyed, to be taught. God wrote it so that he would be known. It also means that the Bible is authoritative. When the Bible speaks, God speaks. And with these understandings of what the Word of God is that comes from the very mouth of God who cannot lie, it means that much diligent effort must be given to understanding it correctly, understanding it rightly, so that they can be faithful stewards of God's truth. What that has meant is sleepless nights, many. Time away from family, as they have juggled family and church ministry and jobs and studying, these men have been exemplary in their character, selfless in their service, diligent in their study. And these two men, Jeff and Omri, are the last graduates of Grace Bible Institute. They join a long line of the ranks of previous graduates of Grace Bible Institute, hallowed halls, Josh Kelso. <laughs> Josh Kelso plowed tough ground and did this same thing. And these men have labored hard. In their last year of study, Grace Bible Church has transitioned from GBI to being a part of TES. And the TES coursework has made up the last year of their study of GBI. And these men get to graduate today from Grace Bible Institute with a Master's of Divinity. They will have the option of taking just a few more classes that weren't quite offered in time and not quite in the right sequence. If they desire, they can take a few more classes and, and get a Master's of Divinity from the Expositor's Seminary. Both of them desire to continue their preparation for pastoral ministry right here at Grace Bible Church. Uh, GBI MDiv does not make a pastor but character qualification and readiness for pastoral ministry and the investment and the discipleship of pastors and the placement and calling by the Holy Spirit of a man to pastoral ministry and the laying on of hands in the local church, these things bring about pastoral ministry. Both of them desire to serve here in the context of ministry, teaching, serving, discipling, being discipled. Jeff Maxwell will be serving in student ministries. Omri will be serving in college and career. Is there a name for that yet? There's no name for that yet. Um, and as well as campus outreach, various other ways that they'll both be serving. Both have a desire to pursue pastoral ministry. Uh, Jeff, somewhere, someday, down the road, uh, wherever the Lord leads, Omri would love to be a part of a team to plant a biblical church in New Orleans. And so we continue to pray for these men as they continue to prepare but I'd like to ask uh, Jeff and Omri and Emily and Becca to come up uh, for a couple of presentations. And uh, I'm going to ask Eric Martin to come up and explain this first one. What they're holding in their hands is an actual page from a Geneva Bible. The Geneva Bible, printed between 1560 and 1644, was created in Geneva for English Christians who were in exile. In Geneva, these exiles were under the protection of John Calvin and John Knox. They were exiled because back in England, Bloody Mary was on the throne, and owning or reading a Bible in English was illegal. The Geneva Bible was the Bible of the English Puritans and of the pilgrims that came to America. This was the Bible that Shakespeare quoted, the first Bible to have numbered verses, and the first Bible to come to America. The page in the frame is from 2 Timothy chapters 3 and 4. 
The text that is also in this was what Smed read a few minutes ago. And I'm going to actually quote what is actually written on there from 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 2 through 4. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Improve, rebuke, expose with all long suffering and doctrine. For time will come when they will not suffer wholesome doctrine. But having their ears itching, shall after their own lust get them an heap of teachers, and shall turn their ears from the truth, and shall be given unto fables. Thank you, Eric. Uh, We have another gift, and uh, on the envelope it says, this is for Jeff and Becca Maxwell. Really, Becca, this is for you. Um, (laughs) it, It is appropriate for us to recognize all of your labors in this endeavor, And we're so thankful for the ministry that you have had to this church and to Jeff and to the future generations of believers that will benefit. So thank you. And this envelope says Omri and Emily Miles, but Emily is all capitals for the same reason. We're so thankful for your ministry and for uh, the fruit that it will bear in many years to come. Thank you. All right, you guys have a seat. All right, while they're being seated and and putting down those precious gifts, I'm going to ask Jeff Maxwell to come back up, and uh, he's going to share a testimony of God's sustaining grace in his life the last uh, several years, and then... uh, Omri, when Jeff is done, you just come on up and do the same. In Psalm 34, 3, the psalmist wrote, O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Psalm 75, 1 says, We give thanks to you, O God, we give thanks. For your name is near, we we recount your wondrous deeds. And that's that's how I plan to spend the next few minutes. I I hope that you will magnify the Lord and exalt his name with me as I give thanks to God and recount his wondrous deeds in my life, my time at Grace Bible Institute and the Expositor Seminary. It is humbling to stand before this church where so many of you have cared for me, you've prayed for me, You've challenged me and you've encouraged me and my family. With your support, I was able to squeeze a four-year degree into five years. So, (laughs) There are many people within this church for whom I am grateful. Um, Many of you have been used by God to encourage me in ways that, that could easily fly under the radar, in ways that you probably don't even know. Um, there's so many families, families like the Duncans, the McInturfs, the Hegnas, Jeff and Lori Hantla. Uh, this is just a sampling of the, of the many families in this body who have, who have cared for me. You, you have both watched me grow and you have contributed to my growth. The elders and their families have sacrificed all kinds of time and effort for me and for my family. Jacob and Kiki Hantla, Scott and Kim Maxwell, there's a a gaggle of Kelsos, um, (laughs) the rest of the elders and their families. I I thank God for you all. I thank God for Smed and his commitment to teaching us well, for all the time that he spent uh, preparing for classes, gathering materials, grading our papers. There's a lot of work that went into into all that he did. Um, John Doobie and Josh Kelso also were diligent in training us in Hebrew and in Greek and caring for us, and, and I'm grateful for that. One of the great strengths of this ministry is that I have been trained by the church, within the church, and I've been trained for the church. I have consistently interacted with you, church members, consistently interacted with church leaders and elders, learning from you all constantly. My theological education was not separated from its practical application. GBI and TES also stand out in their commitment to the absolute authority of Scripture in all matters. Med- talked about this a bit. It's seen in both the philosophy of the training and in the content of the training. It's, it's clear throughout. 
The school and the church have consistently challenged me and stretched me. I, I've maintained full-time employment. Uh, my days often looked like going to class in the morning, um, running off to work, coming home late, spending some time with the family, and then studying until I fell asleep, sometimes in books on my face and all sorts of weird positions. While my family has sacrificed for me to complete this, I'm, I'm confident that my wife would testify that it was all worth it. Um, she would tell you of the grace and the kindness of God to us, how he has caused us to rely on him through sleepless nights, through health difficulties, and through questions about the future. Um, Smed has made clear that our wives have been truly amazing uh, in this time. Uh, we're not pandering or exaggerating because it's Mother's Day. Um, I, I could easily spend my entire time up here sharing with you all of the evidences of the grace of God in Rebecca's life over the years. And I, I wouldn't even be scratching at the surface. My wife has been diligent and caring and godly and supportive, just correcting me, loving me, encouraging me, and strengthening me through my time here. She has willingly and, and happily sacrifice time and money, certainty regarding our future. She sacrificed personal pursuits. She's been patient and quick to forgive. Um, I thank God for the kindness and love that he showed me through her. GBI was not always in our plans. This, is, uh, this was a change from what we planned when we were married. We had, we had initially planned on doing overseas missions work uh, when we were married, or before we were married, and God had plans greater than ours through some uh, health difficulties uh, my wife was diagnosed with lupus, which brings significant medical concerns to life in the U.S., much less to foreign missions. And so with this setback or with this change in plans from God, we, we set our, our hearts on local church planting. Missions is essentially foreign church planting, and why not do that in the United States? And we decided to move to California for seminary after being married. Uh, about that time, we started to attend GBC, uh, Grace Bible Church, and I was made aware of this seminary. Uh, Mick Pagel and Marcus James insisted that this was what God had for me, was this seminary, and that I should not move to California. I was a bit annoyed with their insistence, but they were right. Um, I met with Smed over lunch, and he, he laid out for me what, what seminary life would look like here. <laughs> he told me that seminary was not in my immediate future. He told me that I needed to wait two plus years to take build in the trust, if you're familiar with our internal um, discipleship and, and men's training here. And then they would examine me, and then they must find me to be faithful, and then they would consider training me. Um, this timeline was not appealing to a 23-year-old, um, but I couldn't argue with his appeals from Scripture and with his commitment to training through the local church. Uh, I agreed to be patient and stay and pursue Smed's plan, which was the church's plan, I suppose. And I trained for two years in Build and the Trust uh, before I began training in GBI as the only student. It was just me to begin with, me and Smed. And uh, at the end of this first semester, God chose to introduce some additional medical difficulty. Uh, my wife was placed on bed rest. She was hospitalized for two months. Um, my daughter, Sarai, was born at two pounds. Then she was hospitalized for two months. And through these months of hospitalizations, I was forced to really scale back my work at the seminary. Uh, that's, that's why it took me five years to get through. Um, Sarai and Beck are, are fine now, and uh, God really worked this out uh, really well in his kindness. He brought somebody very special into my life in a, in a new way, uh, Omri Miles. Uh, my time off allowed Omri to catch up to me, and <laughs> if you don't know Omri, you're, you're really missing out. He is, he is quite the character. He, he's been a great encourager. He's been a wonderful counselor for me. Uh, he's a huge nerd. Um, Omri looks significantly cooler than he actually is. Yeah. You, you guys who know Omri, it's very true. Um, my time with Omri and Emily and Chloe and Obadiah uh, has been a, an incredible blessing, along with their, their foster children they've had. It's been a huge blessing to, to have somebody to talk about, talk to with what we're, about what we're learning, to bounce ideas and struggles off of, um, to have someone to film falling asleep in Hebrew class. Um, uh, I, I, outside of my family, um, and my wife and my family, I'm probably most thankful to God for Omri's care over the last few years. 
Um, he is brilliant and wise at the same time. Uh, my enjoyment and application of what I learned was significantly amplified um, when Omri joined me. Uh, the only disadvantage to having Omri join me was he, he threatened my status as valedictorian. Uh, <laughs> graduating class of one versus two uh, made it difficult. Um, for those of you who are in there, Steve, Kyle, um, Jonathan, it's, it's a blessing to have classmates. I know you guys are enjoying that privilege. Uh, in the meantime, the elders have allowed me to do all sorts of different things. Um, they've been kind and, and just cared for me well. As I mentioned, I've, I've led small groups. I've preached in various settings. Uh, they let me start a coffee ministry, which is a highlight for me. Um, they gave me the freedom to work on the book ministry and make it what it is with Omri and Matt Kelso and Jacob Hantlin's help. Um, for the time being, I'm staying in full-time secular employment. Smed mentioned that I'll be uh, running the student ministries here, uh, taking over for Omri and Josh as they begin to lead uh, in other ministries. I'll continue leading as a deacon in small group for the foreseeable future. Um, I'm excited to spend some more time with my wife um, and my kids who are unfortunately sick today, um, Jude, Sarai, and Miriam. Um, I first went to SMED seven years ago now. Uh, the two years of training and then seminary took five years to express my desire to be trained. And, and that may seem like a long time. It kind of is a long time. Uh, I, I am confident that these seven years have accomplished more in me than four years in the seminary I plan to attend and three years of vocational ministry would have, would have accomplished in me. Um, I'm going to close my time with a, a quote attributed to Count Zinzendorf. Um, it's not a direct quote of his words. It's, it's more like a summary that's often attributed to him. He said this, you must be content to preach the gospel, die, and be forgotten. My seminary training has not prepared me to be famous or well-known or cool or popular or trendy at all. But what this, what this seminary training at GBI and the Expositor Seminary prepares us to do is to be content and to preach the gospel so that we can die and be forgotten. And for that preparation, I am grateful to my family, to our pastors, to every single one of you, and to the Expositor Seminary. Thank you, guys. It is hard to believe that this day is finally here. Looking back, four years seems like it went really quickly, but it didn't feel like that in the midst of it. Um, Jeff failed to mention that he actually is our valedictorian, by the way. <laughs> so, uh, wasn't much of a threat to him. Um, you know, I told my wife that when we started, when we decided uh, to actually get trained, that uh, I was certain that God was going to make our experience such that it would be clear when we finished that it was only uh, by his grace that we, that we did uh, what we did and, and were able to make it through. And I certainly believe that, that that's proven true. Uh, I remember talking to Josh and Julie Kelso probably a few weeks or a few months after Josh had finished his training. And uh, he said, you know, I think I, I probably slept, yeah, two, three, four hours a night uh, for the past four years uh, on a regular basis. And I thought, there's no way I'm getting trained. <laughs> there's no way I can survive that. <laughs> and yet here we are. And so God uh, certainly provided. Uh, so the, really this is an opportunity for me to just boast in, in what the Lord has done, uh, especially what God has done through you, Grace Bible Church. In, uh, in helping to, to train us for pastoral ministry in the future. Uh, countless people have been used by God uh, in our lives over the past four years, uh, even outside of Grace Bible Church, first with uh, my own parents who supported us from afar, and uh, my dad is, is always excited now to hear what I'm reading, hear what I'm learning, and uh, we get to sharpen each other in that way. Uh, my own in-laws, who are super supportive, when I uh, told them that we were, I was going to quit my, my teaching career and, and leave to clean pools 
and get training with no promise of a job after that. And so they're actually back there. Can you guys wave? It's <laughs> <to> my in-laws. <laughs> And so they made it clear that they would support us in whatever we decided to do as we were considering that decision. And uh, so like all good grandparents, they volunteered for the difficult task of babysitting more often, uh, which really what they loved to do, so that wasn't, wasn't too much of a, a difficulty. Um, it's a common assumption, as you guys heard from, from Smed, that in order for a, a man to train uh, to serve the local church, that he must go to an institution outside of the local church that's not submitted uh, to the local church, uh, the so-called experts at times. Um, and I'm just so thankful that that, that hasn't been my experience. Uh, through all of my experience, uh, the past four years, everything is, has taken place uh, here. And so really the, the fruit of, of my ministry and, and even those of you who have benefited for my ministry is uh, really what you've poured into me to a large degree. Uh, just to name a, a few of, of those people, which is really impossible for me to, to name everyone, but uh, some of the people who, who have just been uh, significantly um, special to us in this process have been uh, Jerry and Christy Warford. Uh, Jerry hired me to come clean pools for him. Uh, while I was in seminary, and it gave me the uh, flexibility to, to get trained. Uh, Max and Alex Pietropalo, uh, who did date night swaps with us so that we could uh, have regular date nights out. Um, someone who I, I don't know bought my books. <laughs> Still don't know who that is. <laughs> But thank you, that was a significant cost to you. And so I have uh, tools that I'm going to be using the rest of my ministry. Um, the, the Roberts family, uh, who are just a consistent encouragement. Uh, I'm sure that Erica Roberts has the gift of encouragement. Uh, if you know her, that is true. And uh, Cameron, who helped me, he tagged along with me in clean pools during the, during the summer months uh, for no pay. <laughs> So thank you, Cameron. Um, and then many others who, uh, in our small group, constantly uh, praying for us, Scott and Sarah Demaris, who led our small group and were just a constant encouragement. Uh, the other members in our small group who uh, were a constant encouragement, babysat for us, provided meals for us uh, when, things, when things were busy, were always thinking about us. Uh, specifically the elders as well. Um, the elders uh, knew what it took to get me through GBI and uh, have just been so gracious and generous in a myriad of ways. Uh, in particular, um, Smed. Smed talks about the uh, late nights and difficulty of being trained, and certainly he didn't have any easy task. Uh, you know, if you would just see the, the numbers of books and binders that went into a single class uh, from, from him, just the research and work, uh, it, was, it was no small order. And so uh, thank you, Smed. You're one of the busiest guys that I know, and yet uh, nobody who spends time with you knows that. <laughs> they, don't, they don't feel that, we don't feel that. And so thank you for uh, sacrificing and, and loving to train men to love God's word. Uh, and Josh. And Julie Kelso, uh, about 11 years ago when I got here, I uh, knew I needed to be discipled. I was a young believer, and I just knew I needed somebody to pour into me. And uh, so I asked Josh if he would disciple me, and, and he laughed at me uh, because he was too humble to think that he should be discipling anyone. And, and yet he has been uh, such a sweet friend, um, spent many nights in Josh and Julie's home, and uh, they taught me uh, how to be married before I had a wife and how to be a good parent before I had kids. And uh, it's just been a, a sweet privilege to serve alongside them in, in ministry. And uh, my wife, um, Ephesians 3.20 says that God is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask 
or I think. And uh, my wife is a great evidence of that because when I asked the Lord for the best wife that I possibly could, he instead gave me her. And uh, she is, is far better than me than, than the wife that I was desiring. Um, my wife has just faithfully served our family and uh, without complaint has uh, let me pull away for hours at a time, um, every Saturday morning for half the day. And uh, she, the whole time, has raised uh, our family, uh, a couple kids, um, and then foster kids, uh, four, five foster kids, um, and then babysat uh, for many of you <laughs> um, who have kids and just has uh, consistently demonstrated a servant's heart and a willingness to uh, sacrifice of her own uh, comforts and preferences for the good of others. Um, I knew when I was uh, still single that um, she would, would be a, a good wife because she loved the local church. Um, I got to see her just serve uh, the local church and uh, that has certainly, I've, I've been the recipient of, of her devotion to uh, loving and being committed to what Christ loves and is committed to. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to, to being home more. And uh, she's looking forward to that too. <laughs> we got a baby due in a few weeks. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just so thankful for you, babe. Um, this man mentioned our, our future plans. Um, we're going to be here. It's uh, also a privilege not to have to be thinking about going to get a job uh, and using my, my degree. Uh, this is, has been and still is just the perfect place to continue uh, shepherding and uh, laboring alongside the other uh, leaders here. And so Grace Bible Church, thank you. I'm thankful for your commitment to training men and uh, hope that this is this is continually our aim for, for a long time to come. Thank you. I'd like to ask Scott Maxwell to come up at this time, and we will confer degrees. And so all the elders would like for you to come up as well. And uh, elders, we're going to line the, the stage up here, and uh, <clears throat> I'll be on the right you guys after me that way. All right, Jeff. You want Jeff to approach you, Smed? Yes, sir. Jeff approached Smed. <laughs> Jeff, in recognition of your completion of study pursuant to the stipulations of the Arizona State Board for private post-secondary education and in keeping with the biblical mandate of 2 Timothy 2.2, to pass the truth of God on to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, the Elders of Grace Bible Church award to you this Master's of Divinity program. Degree. Omri, why don't you come on up? Omri, and in recognition of your completion of study pursuant to the stipulations of the Arizona State Board for Private Post-Secondary Education, and in keeping with the biblical mandate of 2 Timothy 2.2, to pass the truth of God on to faithful men who will be able to teach others also, the elders of Grace Bible Church award to you this Master's of Divinity degree. Jeff and Omri, as we close, 
I would like to echo the words that Paul wrote to Timothy from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. We echo Paul's words. Retain the standard of sound words which you have heard from me in the faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. Guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us the treasure which has been entrusted to you. Be faithful. Let's pray together. Father, I praise you that it is because of your grace that you have sustained Omri and Jeff through these last four years of school. I praise you for your grace to sustain them as well as their families, to care for them, to provide for them, to give them a church home that is loving and encouraging. Lord, you are so kind and, and so good to do that. Lord, I pray for these men. I'm so thankful for the training that they have been given. Lord, I pray that by your grace, they will continue to be diligent men. Lord God, that they are men who are proved before you. Lord God, that they would have an earnest desire to always accurately handle the word of truth. Lord, in their course of training, they have demonstrated their desire to accurately handle your word. And I pray, Lord God, that as they continue in ministry here and elsewhere, according to your plan, that by your grace, you would sustain in them a desire to continue to accurately handle your word, that their esteem for your word, their reverence for your word would flow out of their reverence, their esteem for you, that they would be faithful and true to your word. What a privilege it is for us to enjoy this day, to recognize what you have done for them. We pray this in Christ's name.